Hello, welcome to my video on how to uh, pass the AP World History Exam 2020. My name is Alexis Camarena and let's get started. So in this video, we're going to go over the test, what to study, prep books, college board, notes, time management, and the full practice test. So uh, the, te the test itself is split up into four sections. It's going to be a total of three hours and 15 minutes long. So the first section, multiple choice, is 55 questions, 55 minutes, and it's going to be 40% of the exam score. Then you have your short answer, which is three questions in 40 minutes. That's 20% of your exam score. Uh, next, you have your DBQ, your document-based question, one question in one hour with your 15-minute reading period. That's 25% of your exam score. And then you have your long essay. That is one question in 40 minutes. That's 15% of your exam score. So this is the entire test, basically. So what you're going to need to study for the multiple choice, uh, the test is organized into six time periods. Goes, it ranges from 600 BCE, six, yeah, circa 600 B, before circa 600 BCE to the present day. So these, um, these bullet points are basically what you need to study. Um, make sure you know the major world powers and the economic development, politics, and social change within each of the time periods. Um, so basically, you don't have to memorize everything in order to do well on the test. Uh, you just have to get. Uh, you just have to focus on the big patterns and developments and be able to explain them well. So um, don't overstress yourself with every single detail. You're not going to use all that in the test, but just. The main, the main thing is to know uh, the big ideas. So, the short answer, uh, this is different. You are required to do three questions. Two of them are given to you. Um, and then the third one is an option between uh, two, um, two questions. So you get to choose which one you want to do. Um, you're just going to basically analyze uh, historians interpretations historical sources and uh, propositions about history and then create an answer based off what the question is asking you to do um, you could use prep books and online resources to practice some of these prompts they have uh, practice prompts basically available for you to use and I'd say those are really helpful so you could get an understanding of what the short answer is what it asks for you and how you're gonna deal with it you know how what strategies you're gonna use to uh, finish it now the long answer um, down requires you to uh, select a question from three different time periods um, you're gonna have to explain and a analyze a significant issue in world history from your own knowledge so they're not gonna give you uh, a source or anything to look at so you got to choose something from your own brain basically um, so you're gonna develop your argument and you're gonna support it with um, some historical evidence um, for this you really just gotta practice some prompts uh, that you can find online you gotta familiarize yourself with how it works uh, and basically you're gonna have to read a lot so I'd say to pay a lot of attention during class, during uh, lectures, uh, take a lot of good notes, um, really, you're going to have to put in a lot of work for this one. So you're going to have to research new topics, you're going to have to read books, and you're going to have to dive into world history uh, when you have free time. If you want to do well on this, you got to put in the own, you put in your own work, basically. And um, this would be considered one of the harder parts of the uh, exam but when you really know what you're talking about it's gonna go by really quickly um, a, a tip of advice is that when you choose what you're gonna write about in the long answer just make sure you really know what you're talking about so on your DBQ um, it's good to annotate and gather uh, key ideas when you're reading the various sources but first you should skim read it and see which sources you want to use. Don't fully read it everyone because every one of them because then you're going to waste your time. So, um let's uh make sure you choose what sources you want to use. 
And now when you make your thesis, don't overgeneralize it. Make sure you have a point you're trying to get to. All right. So um, that way you don't have to write too much about your thesis because when you're going to try to come back to your thesis, when you're trying to con connect all your sources, all your evidence to your thesis, you really don't have something to connect it to. So make sure you don't overgeneralize it. Um, make sure you stay within the time period, uh, use your reading period wisely, and when you're writing your actual essay, make sure that in one paragraph you don't just have one source. Make sure you have multiple sources in that one paragraph so you could connect it all and allow um, the person that's grading your exam to know that you know how to analyze because right here they're checking to see if you know how to analyze your sources. Um, so make sure you use multiple multiple sources in your different paragraphs. Um, keep it original as well. Don't throw in a bunch of quotes. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be too much. And they want to see your own work as well. You know they don't want to just reread the sources themselves. You know, so don't throw in too much quotes. You could use quotes, but just don't overdo it. Basically, um, search up. DBQs online or as a teacher if they could provide you some DBQs so you could practice uh, Gain your own strategies of how you want to do this. Maybe you want to split up uh, your reading period in a different way from someone else and Make an outline just depends on what you want to do, but make sure you practice uh, Prep books they're really helpful. They can be found in stores such as Barnes and Nobles or through Amazon um an example of a prep book is Barron's AP World History Prep Book. That's what it looks like. Uh, it really helps you uh, prepare for the test because if you could see really closely, it has three full length practice tests, including one online. Um, it covers the topics and everything. So this really does help you prepare because it gives you practices, it gives you tips, and in all reality, this is a really good book. I would recommend getting it if you had the chance. Um, when you before you're gonna take the test, like during sp uh, the spring, uh, make sure you you bring this book out and review so you could uh get those fo foggy subjects back up to date. You know, but don't don't rely on this book to to study. This isn't what's gonna get you that five on the test. This is just a basically a review. Uh, it prepares you to take the test, not like what's on the test exactly. So make sure you keep that in mind. So College Board, this website is really helpful. Um, it covers a lot of the information regarding the exam itself. And um, I think you should just go through it. It gives you some practices, some tips for the exam. And this is another source of study besides the prep books. So let's go to their website really quick. I already have their website up here. Um, let me close these out. Right here you have the, the website, the main page, right? AP World History Modern. You have the home, the course, classroom resources. This is everything that's going to help you out. So let's just look at this little description right here. And uh, as you can see, this PDF, 234 pages worth of information. It includes framework, instructional sec sections, and sample, sample exam questions. So this is your prompts right here. Uh, you should look into those so you could practice the short answer, long answers, DBQs. I'm going to just go through this so you can see what's what's up with it. Here's the contents. Uh, you have your unit so you can study those. Guides, everything you need. It's right here. It's really helpful. Uh, rubrics. This tells you the rubric for the uh, example of DBQ. Um, look at this. Make sure you want to get the highest points possible so this website is really helpful i'm telling you it's 234 pages worth of information so make sure you check it out so let's get back to the presentation the uh, notes make sure your notes are full of the key points keywords don't uh, do everything word for word that's too much work too much stress and it's really not going to help you you're going to lose more than gaining anything uh Make sure you gather the most important information first. Uh, after your class period or your lecture, gather with your classmates and revise your notes, you know, enhance your notes. Maybe they got something that you didn't get. So it's always good to ask for help. It's not cheating, you know. It's another aid for your uh, success. Um, 
right? So you're gonna use these notes to study for the exam. The prep books are to prepare you for taking the exam, but all the content in the exam that you're gonna, that you're gonna be tested on, that's gonna be based on your notes. So make sure your notes are good. Now your time management is important. Section one, part eight asks for 55 questions in 55 minutes. So that means that you're gonna do one question per minute. Make sure you practice so you can get one question per minute. Once you got that down, you're pretty much set for that. But make sure you're not rushing, all right? Always make sure you're not rushing. Section one, part B, asks for three questions in 40 minutes. That's a short answer. So that's one question per 13 minutes. Once you top that, you're good. Section two, part A, asks for one question, one hour, plus a 15 minute reading period. So in that 15 minute reading period, make sure you split it up, you know? Um, skim, skim your sources, annotate, choose the ones you want and then organize an outline all right organize an outline so let's say you say paragraph one i'm gonna use source a d and c uh paragraph two i'm gonna use b a and d you know create an outline on how you're gonna organize your uh, essay it's really helpful uh in section two part b ask for one question in 40 minutes that's all gonna be on you so that's the one where you got to bring in your own knowledge of world history you know for this i'm saying just do pure practices and make sure you get your own strategies on how you want to use your time. Um, but once you get that essay in 40 minutes, you're basically set, you know? Um, everything you want to put into your essay, if it's done in 40 minutes, you're good. But make sure it's a good essay. You don't want to be uh, rushing it and just failing it, trying to get that 40 minutes. It's better to do like an essay with two body paragraphs then one with three that are just really bad you know so um keep that in mind uh wearing a watch is permitted in the test there's certain uh, i don't know if it's certain watches but it is permitted and it's really helpful it keeps you on track and it really helps you uh it really helps you out uh, and so time management is where uh that prep book um, helps out a lot and all the similar sources it really helps out because they give you the prompts uh, and the multiple choice uh, as practices and you could time yourself to make sure you're hitting that uh, one question per minute or one question per 13 minutes you know so this is why I'm, I'm telling you guys that the prep books and that college board it's really helpful so now full practice test if it's possible for your school to get one a uh, full practice test, it's really helpful. It really opens your eyes to what the test is, how it works, uh, how tired you get throughout the test, what you need to improve on. I took a practice test, and I remember halfway through it, I was just done. I didn't want to do it anymore, and that's because I didn't sleep the, the day prior to it. And so that's what I'm going to get into right now. Um, before you take the test, make sure you get a uh, full eight hours of sleep or however much you want to make sure you're awake you're aware the next day make sure you eat your breakfast get your energy up um these are often overlooked um but it's always good to make sure you're feeling your best when you're taking the test when you're taking the test remember this is basically like a one-time thing focus on the, te the test uh, itself you know don't be focused on anything happening outside of school that later that day or anything um, so if that's a problem for you, you should practice, uh, focusing on what you're reading, what you're taking the test on. Okay. Um, that's basically my final, my, my final tips. So I hope you guys, uh, really take this into account and do well on the test. Um, that's how you're going to get a five on the AP world history 2020 test. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.